thank you. My name is Stefan Hilberg. I'm from Sweden. And I'd like to speak to you about a heliospectra. So which one is it? There we go. Uh, we were started in 2006. Uh, we have a very strong background in plant research. We have eight employees. Uh, we raised about 1.7 million euros so far from uh, angels and, and uh, venture capitalists. And uh, we have been working closely with Sweatponic Santa Maria, which is uh, Europe's largest producer of fresh herbs. Uh, they have 12 hectares of greenhouse area in Sweden, Belgium, UK, Poland, and Portugal. And uh, they would require 30,000 of our products. So, there we go. So, this is the greenhouse uh, you see typically. It's a factory today. Uh, the herbs start in the beginning as small seedlings, and they move along automatically about 100 meters until they're ready to be harvested. In a greenhouse, you will find these lights. There's one lamp of four square meters. They consume 400 watts per lamp. It's about a thousand of these up in the roof. That's a lot of energy consumption up there. And they turn on for about 3,500 hours per year. You have to replace the light bulb every three years. It contains mercury, uh, so that's quite a bit of work. The market itself contains about 56 million of these bulbs worldwide. That's excluding China. It's an expanding industry. And, and people want to produce more closer to the, f to the home, and, and people want to buy fresh herbs. And, and this market is, is expanding quite dramatically. So this is the uh, light spectrum, the green, that a plant likes. A plant likes a lot of blue and a lot of red uh, to, to do photosynthesis, but it actually requires a whole spectrum in order to, to produce a quality crop. Now, if you look at the spectrum of the typical lamp in the greenhouse, it's quite the opposite. It's actually designed for our eyes. We like yellow and green, which is perfect for humans. And it has a spike up in the red area there, which is heat. So it generates a lot of heat. You need heat in a greenhouse, but you don't want the heat up in the roof. You want the heat down by the roots, which is why they have uh, water pipes down by the, by the roots. So it's like heating up your house with light bulbs, which is pretty stupid. Uh, so we estimate that 25% of the energy from the HPS lamp is used by the plants today. So this is our system. Uh, we basically have a feedback system where we can read from the plants how they are receiving the light, because we are reading reflectance and fluorescence from the plants, similar to when NASA detects algae growth in the oceans. And we can give back the light that the plant prefers to achieve an optimum growth. This is a patent-pending system. Uh, the benefits for the customer, if you look at the plants up on the right-hand side, they look better, they taste better, you can charge more, you can actually change the rate of production, increasing and decreasing, allowing supply to demand, and, and you also save up to 50% of the energy in a greenhouse. Uh, you don't need these mercury-based bulbs, which are being banned in the EU, EU as well. Uh, you have longer shelf life, less track transports, and less light pollution. So many advantages. Pasta is great. Basil, the pesto is perfect, by the way. Uh, so the competition, this market is making a transition today from the traditional lights to LEDs. Obviously, we have the big companies, Philips and GE and Ostrom and those guys. Now, they all come from the light space. We come from understanding what the plants need, and that's a big difference. I think the most sophisticated competitor we've seen is, is a U.S. company, Orbitech, doing work with NASA on how to grow up in space. Uh, we have been chosen by a Canadian company, which is the largest supplier of growth chambers to the most sophisticated market, basically small greenhouses to universities and institutions. So we're adapting our system for their units. So we know we have a very good technology. The management team uh, was founded by Suvan Dubé, Canadian, living in Sweden. He's a plant uh, physiologist, and he's also managed greenhouses in Canada. We have another Canadian uh, who also has a plant background, both PhDs. Uh, we think there are about 20 of these people in the world today. We have two of them in Sweden, and we have a very good director of engineering. Myself, I have a long background in startups and venture capital, worked for Apple Computer all over the world. So, uh, we think we will do about 2.6 million euros the first year. 
another 6.7 the second year, and about 10 million euros revenues the year after. That actually represents only three greenhouses the first year, nine greenhouses the second year, and 20 the third year. So that's a very small part of the market. It's a very conservative approach looking at financing, and about breaking even the second year. So we're raising about 1.2 million euros at 4 million valuation and the funds will be used for staff, marketing sales, continued research and some working capital. So we're doing a small experiment today in a small greenhouse and we will install into full-scale greenhouse end of this year. So that means we'll start our revenues then. Now the future to conclude, what's happening in the world is uh, the greenhouse industry is moving to a, a plant factory. Uh, you'll see buildings, you'll see containers, you'll see warehouses, all kinds of places being converted into greenhouses, and where some will not use uh, sunlight at all. They will actually only use artificial light. So this is a, a very expanding industry. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Six minutes. Brilliant. Four minutes of questions. Or it can be reduced if you... We've got a question over there. Hello, thank you. That was quite impressive. Um, I don't remember if you mentioned it or not. With what uh, research institution are you collaborating in Sweden? Uh, Chalmers University of Technology, uh, which is one of the premium uh, scientific schools in Sweden. Uh, we're also working with uh, SLU, which is the... Um, the um, government-owned uh, agriculture universities. Okay. So we're actually, when you look at this feedback system, we're mapping about 60 different parameters from the plants that we can actually detect. So we can see if a plant is stressed, if it needs water, if it has a wrong light, if it's being attacked by insects. A plant will yell, help, help, you know, I have a problem. And it will do that by reflecting light and by fluorescing light. Uh, hello, Stephen. Uh, this is Ankit. Well, I was wondering, like, when you use install these lights, and do you also see any connection with, say, cloud computing? Because when you scale up and you have more greenhouses, you need more energy. Uh, it's an interesting. Well, actually, I've talked to Google, but uh, <laughs> it's an interesting question. Uh, you could say that, in essence, we we are. I mean, we're putting computers up in each light, actually. So our lights are intelligent, and we communicate with them over wireless. So it's, you know, basically we have our own cloud computing system almost. But, you know, it's embedded processors, of course. But yes, we have approached some of these cloud computing companies. Thank you very much. You mentioned that the uh, plants grow faster, maybe, that they become more healthy, more tasty. You can charge a higher price for it. But you did not mention the comparison between the price of your light system and the current light system or the LEDs. So will your lights be more expensive? or in, uh, Yes, so and it's quite, quite could similar. Could you compare them to the, to the current system? It's quite A normal light today costs about 200 euros to install. That's using the traditional HPS bulb. But then you have to look at the total cost of ownership because you're replacing the bulbs, you're cleaning them. They have a life expectancy of about 10 years. The LED-based lights we're using have a life expectancy of about 50,000 hours. And obviously, you save lots of energy. So uh, from a, a total cost of ownership, uh, our units are actually cheaper uh, when you look at it from a total cost of ownership. But initial capital X cost for the, for the customer is obviously higher. But there are ways you can change the business model to accommodate that, which is also done by LED lights for street lights today, you know, where, where uh, somebody will go to a, a government and say, we'll replace them free of charge. All you pay us is the normal cost of, of energy you have today. And then you have a lease arrangement on the back. So. Very good. Last question? Just the last question. You mentioned that spectrum of PER for the light for the... Uh Plans. Does your light system match better that spectrum? Than the uh, sunlight or? No, you mentioned that spectrum which is favorable for the plant growth. Does your yeah. light match that spectrum better? Yes, it does because our light is totally flexible. 
we can create any spectrum we want and because the need of a plant is dependent on what stage of development it is and what type of plant. So they're all different. That was your last sentence. Thank yes. you very much. Thank you.